it's never pleasant being on a horse that is rushing at fences because not only are you traveling probably much faster than you're comfortable with, but also you don't really have any say in what's going to happen and that can feel really, really out of control. Hey there, and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach, and I work with riders from all over the world, especially those working without a trainer or an instructor to help them to improve their riding and also to help their horse kind of improve as well. And this month inside of Daily Strides Premium, we are speaking about horses that are rushing fences. And this episode is actually plucked from in there. It is the first of five episodes that will take you through a process of getting your mind in shape so that you can begin to help your horse. Okay, when you're ready, let's dive in. Riding a horse that is rushing and racing is not a whole lot of fun for many people. It, first of all, you end up with that horrible pain across your shoulder blades. And secondly, well, it's kind of fear of dying, isn't it? That's what I want to talk about in this group of lessons, steadying your neddy up. Hi there, this is Lorna and welcome to Daily Strides Premium. I hope you are having an absolutely great day and hopefully this group of lessons is going to help you even if you don't have a quote unquote rusher when it comes to fences. Now, I am creating them from the viewpoint that it is for a horse that is kind of jumping things, I don't know, like a stag. (laughs) Kind of racing at things like a rocket and uh, flattening over it and popping it. That is from kind of where we're doing this. However, um, I do think this would help any horse that has a tendency to not really respect the aids and particularly the more resisting aids where you're asking things to slow down, steady up there, buddy. Um, or horses that tend to get on a bit, okay, carry on a bit. Um, this would definitely help them as well. So not just for rushers and not just for jumping. And in fact, we're actually not even going to touch a jump this week, okay? No jumping required. What I want to do with this week, so I kind of feel that there's three different places and let me just preface this whole kind of theme that we're going through, um, which is going to be about horses that are rushing. But let me just preface it by saying that I really feel there's three different areas that you have to work on in order to really and truly correctly retrain or reschool this problem. You have to work on the actual basic training in the flat work. So things like the half halt, the responsiveness, the, the stop and the goes, you know, the, the simple stuff, eh? Which we're going to be doing this week. You also have to work on the rider. I sometimes find, no, not I sometimes, I often find that riders who have ridden a horse who tends to rush or get fast or whatever you want to call it eh, for any length of time, it's like the horse invited them to ride badly. They sent out an invitation there and the rider took them up and said, yeah, perfect, no problem at all. I'm the person for the job there. I can do that. And through the rider, maybe not riding as well as they could or they should, uh, I hate shoulds, but as well as that, um, it actually ends up making the problem worse. So we're going to be working on the rider as well. And then finally, we will be in the next uh, week of lessons to this, we'll actually be working over poles themselves. Okay, so we're kind of building up to it. We're taking a three pronged approach at it. Hopefully that's going to help you to cure this. I also want to just say that if you have a horse who has been rushing for any length of time, it is going to take a while to retrain that because he is used to reacting a certain way, okay? It's also going to take a while for you to be able to switch from reaction to response, okay? And I say that because very often when a horse basically turns a corner and starts hurtling flat out towards a fence or a jump, um, we do tend to react, you know, life preservation, that's important, hey? Um, So we tend to react a little bit. Um, We need to try and also reprogram ourselves to respond a little bit better to that, okay? So it's not going to, to be an overnight success, but I do feel 
that you could definitely see progress within a month. Um, I really and truly believe that. And that that progress is going to be made on the flat more so than over poles or fences, okay? And it's not what people who jump want to hear. They want to work over jumps all of the time. Um, but no, this is, you're going to have to kind of rein that little temptation in and you're going to have to start really focusing your efforts on the flat. And on that note, what I'm looking for today is we want to start basically establishing a rhythm, okay? So one of the most basic things and one of the things that I would love you to be able to do at the end of this and whether the end is three months or six months down the line for you and your horse okay I would love that you would be able to it's it's, it's a great exercise I love doing it particularly enjoy doing it with OTTBs but I find all horses benefit and all riders benefit is by just setting up two fences at let's say where the E and the B would be in your arena okay in the middle of the long sides of the arena it doesn't have to be there it can be anywhere at all I just find that works best and then just cantering big ovals around the arena and being able to hold the rhythm the whole time okay holding the rhythm and then later kind of the the next level of it is holding the rhythm while seeing the stride and reaching the fence on the correct stride each time okay so that would be where if you wanted okay where am I going with this that would be where I would suggest that you try and build things up to okay being able to contain and maintain that rhythm all the way through so as it's not getting flat it's not getting long it's not getting loopy and it sounds so easy it's not this is actually quite a difficult exercise to ride when you're riding it correctly but um that is where I'd want you to build this. So with that in mind, we're going to start today on a circle. So I want you on the left rein on a 20 meter circle and I want you down one end of the school. Now we are only going to trot today, so let's not get too carried away. Um, but in case you're thinking, Jakers Lauren, and now you're asking me to do cantering like big loops and everything. Sure, the horse keeps running away with me. No, don't worry. We're not going to be doing that at all, okay? So I do want you though on the 20 meter circle, um, I want you down one end of the arena and it's not going to be quite clear now but in the next lesson it will why we're doing that but down one end of the arena so pick a or a or c <laughs> to your 20 meter circle down there and what i'm looking for is to start getting a good quality active trot so very often how we begin reschooling this okay the the knee-jerk reaction that many riders have is they slow everything down now you know if, if you've had basically the life frightened out of you on a couple of occasions when a horse was kind of blazing flat out towards a fence and it felt like you'd absolutely no control over the situation I can understand your need and your wanting to go slower however it's really important that when you're working with your horse on this issue that you're doing so from a place that the horse could potentially jump a jump from Okay, and this is even if you don't want to go jumping, if you just find the horse tends to maybe in the canter and the trot, it just gets very long and loopy and things are, ah, this is not where I want this to go at all. Um, and you're using it for that reason. That's also okay. But I do want a good quality trot. And to me, a good quality trot is a trot that you could jump a fence of maybe three foot from. You're thinking, okay, I could never jump a fence. <laughs> from that in trot or oh, you could you could even do a whole grid of them if you wanted to if you and your horse developed enough okay so you don't have to do that again no jumping no poles even okay um but what i do want is a good quality trot the reason i want that is it's when we start to put energy into something that sometimes the wheels can tend to start falling off on us okay and one of the ways the wheels start to fall off is that it tends to start going a little bit crooked. And this is what I want you to notice while we're on this circle. So I do want you posting to the trot. I don't want you doing sitting trot. Um, I want you posting. The reason I want you posting is I want the horse to be able to use his back as well, okay? So that connecting the energy through is really important. Now, when you think about jumping later, one of the reasons horses jump flat when they're rushing is because the energy is not connected. It's just all falling out the front end, okay? But I want you to be able to connect it through and it, when, when energy is correctly connected, it recycles. Now, obviously, some of it dissipates as you're using it and you're burning some of it up. But for the most part, you're holding it, you're, you're containing it inside of the horse or inside of you and the horse, the container that is you and the horse. OK, and your your job then becomes to maintain that. And that is relaxation. And it's when this relaxation bit, the maintenance bit tends to go for a ball. That's where you get the rushing kind of coming through. OK, so I want you just to focus on good quality trot and starting to notice where energy may be 
be leaking out, okay? Now, we're posting along there. I also want you to pay attention to how you are asking the horse to trot. So very often when a horse starts to rush on us, um, we can a little bit become very passive in our approach and what I mean is we also we almost become terrified to put our leg on well I better not put my leg on because well he's gonna shoot off like a bullet and I don't know I don't like that feeling and that's okay I don't know of anybody who likes that feeling okay so um that's okay but the thing is the more you're riding without your leg on and this doesn't matter what horse is and I find this actually even more important for a quote-unquote hot or a um a, a hot-blooded uh excited kind of a horse, a, a, a fireworks sort of a horse, okay? You do have to have your leg on, really important. So I want you just to notice there that as you're trotting, every time you sit, okay? So we're, we're doing posting, we're rising trot. Every time your bum is in, in contact with that saddle, I want that your lower leg is playing a part to ask for more. Now, also important here that your outside leg is supporting. Your outside leg, very often what, what you might find happening in this situation especially is that when you ask for more through your lower leg and your inside lower leg, the horse can kind of almost do a little shimmy. It's a little bit of a leg yield if you want, but it's a shimmy movement. And it kind of, in this case, it would be kind of bulges out a little bit to the right. And what ends up happening is that energy falls out through the outside shoulder, your horse's right shoulder. Now, your outside leg, you might think, but that's my outside rein. It is, but it's also your outside leg. I want you to make sure your outside leg is on there, that it is a boundary and that it is saying, no, 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 back here, buddy. You keep that energy in there. Thank you very much. So as you're applying your inside leg, you're applying your outside leg. Your inside leg it becomes like a, a lift feeling. You So your, your your calf, your lower leg, it's like you want to wrap it around your horse and lift up with it. Okay, a little bit, that's it. And then you release it. Very important, you release. Okay, you ask and you release. You don't keep like, it's like the doorbell. You ring it and somebody responds. You don't keep your finger on the doorbell. Okay, so think of it that way. Um, but your outside leg becomes more like a, just a, a, a wall, okay? It's not so much lifting, it's more of a, whoop, keep it in there, buddy. And it's like, again, it's a touch, it's a like a touch point. I find that where the inside leg, it, it's a more upward pressure, the outside leg is a more sideways pressure, in pressure, okay? And the same thing, it also releases. It's just really important to also recognize that when the leg releases, when your lower leg releases, there's no daylight. There's never daylight between your legs and your horse's sides, okay? It doesn't matter what you're doing. There should not be daylight there. So just make sure that you're not releasing it to the point where you're taking your leg off. And again, very often if the horse's reaction is to shoot forward like a bullet, our reaction, and this is the difference between a reaction and a response, our reaction can be to take the leg off. It's kind of like we got burnt. Well, hey, take that off. That didn't go to plan. Let's not do that again. But that's not what I want you to do. I want you to respond rather by putting the leg on again, but this time being a little bit more firmer and particularly in this case with the outside rein. So we're on this circle. So this is going to be your, your right hand is going to say, Hey there now, hang on there a moment. Okay, that's not what I asked for at all at all. And you're gonna hold now. Again, this is a hold and a release, and a hold and a release. And when I say a release, it's a softening. I'm not saying throw the reins, I'm not saying drop the contact contact should be consistent all the way it's just like it's a pressure it's like a squeezing a sponge out releasing the squeeze but you're still holding on to that sponge you're not giving the sponge to anybody else you're just no longer wringing water out of it holding on to it releasing it holding on to it releasing it holding on to it releasing it okay so important that you get that kind of balance in Okay, I'm going to be back with you tomorrow. We're going to chat a little bit more and we're going to start adding a couple more bits and bobs into this. Um, if you feel that right now this is already, whoa, putting the leg on, horses shooting forward, I am going to suggest listening to this again. I also would like that before you, we get into tomorrow's episode, you actually practice this on the right as well. Um, so come back to walk. Give your horse just a few minutes to walk there because we have been trotting for a while. Give him a few minutes to walk, go back to it on the right rein, and then from there, we'll be ready to then pick up tomorrow and kind of go to the next piece in this whole process of reschooling our horses. Okay, I'll be back with you then. Be good. Bye.
So there you have it. The first episode in a group of five trainings on this topic about reschooling a horse that's rushing fences, but doing so from the approach of reschooling the rider first. Now, of course, there are a second week of lessons to go with this inside of Daily Strides Premium as well, where we're going to focus on the horse. I mentioned it in that lesson. But yeah, if you would like to get your hands on all of those lessons and all the Daily Strides Premium lessons, you can pop on over to stridesforsuccess.com forward slash DSP. All of the details are there. Okay, I am going to leave it at that for today. I hope you have a great one. Keep well, and I'll chat to you soon. Be good. Bye.